MS Lifelines cross-sectional survey is a survey, an internet-based survey that was sent to individuals in the United States who are part of our MS Lifelines program. We were able to receive responses back from just over 600 individuals in the U.S. who have been treated with cladribine. Um, and this study was also designed to really learn a little bit about how cladribine is being used in the real world. Um, so you'll see that we present information on the patient demographics. One really interesting finding that I think came out of this study is at least in the MS Lifeline study, we see um, a higher utilization rate in the non-white patients than we saw in our clinical trials. Now, historically, clinical trials have been bad at getting enroll or enrolling underserved populations. So um, using surveys like this might be one means of learning more about how our medications are affecting that underserved or underrepresented population. We also learn about the MS disease characteristics of these individuals, like which disease modifying therapy they were on prior to coming to cladribine tablets. Interesting to note that in this survey, it was about 15% of individuals who actually were treatment naive before coming on to cladribine tablets, which is something that is inconsistent with our, our US label, but we do see it frequently done in the United States. Um, and then when we look at the most common disease modifying therapies that the patients are coming from, it's some infusion drugs, it's some injectable drugs, it's some oral drugs are really coming from the full spectrum of MS therapies. This, um, this uh, cross-sectional survey also tried to get at treatment persistence. Um, meaning, how long is the patient staying on cladribine tablets after they start it? Um, we all know that medications only work if the patient is taking them. And um, we think that consistently taking a medication as long as it's working for you is really the best way to keep multiple sclerosis um, appropriately treated and um, calmed down. So what we saw with this study, and mind you, different patients were at different places in their cladribine treatment course, but we saw very few patients that discontinued cladribine tablets and switched on to something else. In fact, it was 95.3% of the participants that were still taking cladribine at the time of their last follow-up, which means that only four and a half percent of individuals um, stopped taking the cladribine 